Comic Books of Night, episode 450. Welcome back to the Comic Books of Night. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode, we're going to be going over... I'm going to be doing a TV talk episode going over the first season of The Boys. I know it's been out for a little while. We even actually had some brief conversations about the show on the Facebook group. <clears throat> and I was kind of torn in between if I was even going to cover it at all. But I happened to have some free time recently. And I just went back and I ended up in like one night binge the whole series. So I figured... Um, this would be the best platform, uh, if anywhere, to do a review of the first season of the show. Talk about my thoughts, my opinions. This is going to be a spoiler-filled episode, so if you haven't seen it, um, then definitely you might want to stop the podcast at this point and come back to this episode once you actually watch the show. Um, again, like I said, I know a lot of people had mixed feelings about this, but again, I uh, was kind of had some free time. I was kind of bored and figured out I would check it out to see how it was, and uh, ended up in that process ended up watching the whole show um so before we get into all that as always i'd like to give my uh, shout out to my friends over at the comics podcast network uh, you can find them over at comicspodcast.com if you like what i do here and you want um more comic book related content it's a good place to go start your search there are literally hundreds of different podcasts listed there you can find podcasts listed based upon publisher uh, individual characters, teams, etc. So uh, you have a huge um, realm to search from if you're looking for more comic book related content, be it a single person podcast like myself or a round table discussion or a dual host uh, podcast situation. You can find all that. You can really drill down and find uh, things to your liking uh, through the Comics Podcast Network. I've been associated with them since the very beginning. Um, so most of my 13 years I've been associated with them. It's helped me tremendously. I know a lot of you have discussed uh, openly in the Facebook group about um, wondering about getting into podcasting. I feel like it's a great tool when you're first starting out because basically the whole structure of the Comics Podcast Network was based around it was a bunch of us smaller podcasters at the time uh, wanted to create a system where we could all support one another and uh, trade links to one another, trade like promos, so you could help promote one another and help grow each other's audience. And then also find people that you might could collaborate with as well to expand your listener base. So that was the spirit behind the Comics Podcast Network. So if you're an inspiring podcaster as well, it can be twofold because you can use it as a tool to help you when you're first starting out, build your audience, because that is one of the hardest things to do when you're starting to do something like uh, content creation is finding your niche and finding what works for you and then the next biggest thing is growing a listenership and following so again definitely check out the comics podcast network you can find them over at comicspodcast.com now with all that being said we're looking at the punish um not the punisher excuse me the boys which is the amazon original series uh, the if you're unfamiliar with with the boys, the series originally started on DC Wildstorm. Um, it got a little bit too risque for DC. They they canceled the title. Then it went over to Dynamite, where it flourished until it until it ended. It's had like that kind of cult following over the years. Um, again, to be honest with you, this is what even made me more so torn about. Uh, watching the show and then i really wasn't a big fan of the comic i read the first wildstorm issues the first few trades and i think it and i even picked it up again once it went over to dynamite and i'm probably read maybe a third into the series or i can't remember because i can't remember how long the series went for far as issue wise i probably should have looked that up um <clears throat> but i read like in the 20th so I, you know like i read very early on to the series I didn't read it to completion. I lost interest after a while, uh, to be honest with you, just being 100% honest. Um, yeah, so it, it faded out for me uh, relatively quickly because, you know, I, you hear a lot of things sometimes about people saying it's violence for the sake of violence. I kind of felt like at points 
that it was. And that's what turned me off. And that's what I think a lot of the, from the discussions that the brief discussions we had about the show um, when I was considering watching it, that was kind of the sentiments that a lot of us kind of echoed about it. Um, yeah. So that was, you know, a main thing for me, like I said. So I read maybe the extent of maybe the Wildstorm run, maybe. Uh, then I, like I said, then I just really, uh, wasn't compelled to follow through to completion. I'm seeing here, I pulled it up on Wikipedia. It ran, the entire run was, um, 72 issues. So only the first, uh, the first six issues came out through Wildstorm, which was, um, the boys, the name of the game, which they actually used that cover as one of the promotional pictures for the live action show. That really was cool. Um, issues seven through 72 all were released through dynamite till it completed it run. It ran from October, 2006 to November, 2012. So it's taken a while for this show to get made. It's been rumored for a while, but Seth, um, Seth, um, gosh, who's producing this show? I'm horrible with names sometime. Um, is it Seth Rogen? No, that's that's the uh, UFC announcer. Uh, I can't even find it. You know what? Um, is it Seth Rogen? I just was looking at the TV show. But, um... Now it's going to bother me. I hate giving false information. I see too many people do that right now on the internet. So I'm trying to stop that. Um, executive producers. Yeah, I was right. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was thinking it was wrong. Uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Greenberg, which they've done Preacher. They've had success in this realm of developing highly violent comics into television shows that have been relatively you know pretty much successful preachers finishing its end run uh going into it they've already been renewed for a second season of the boys um that's going to be bigger and better better they're going to put even more money behind it um so i'm really really curious so let me just go over some of the the few tidbits we the far as the casting we have carl uh, urban as one of the lead roles as billy the butcher we have jack quaid as huey campbell we have Anthony Starr as Homelander. We have um, Aaron Moriarty as uh, Annie slash Starlight. We have Dominique uh, McGlo- McElloch. I can't pronounce this correctly. Dominique Mc, uh, McElgott, I guess, is Queen Maeve. We have uh, Jesse T. Usher as A-Train. We have Laz Alonzo as Mother's Milk. We have Chance Crawford as The Deep. Uh, Tomer Capone as Frenchie. Uh, Karen uh, Fukara uh, as the female, Nathan Mitchell as Black Noir, uh, Elizabeth Shue as Madeline Stilwell. And and this show is not for everyone. This is definitely, this is not for children. This is like R, 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 a hard R, you know, definitely. I feel like the, here's the difference that where the show worked for me, where the comic didn't, they had a great balance between the ultra violence and they slid in, you know, humor with the tin of seriousness. And it, it borrowed a little bit. I feel like it did what uh, what DC couldn't do well. It took the darkness of the subject material and balanced it with just enough humor to soften some of the darker edges but at the same time remain a balance and it kept you intrigued. It did not like pull you out of it. Um, and some of the things you saw on screen was very, very shocking. And it's not for the faint of heart. Um, I think, you know, all in all, this was a well-written and produced adaptation of a comic that, you know, the comic that it was based off of. And you worry about that so much when it comes to seeing these things that we love in comics adapted, you know, into, you know, animation, um, major motion pictures or even on the small screen to television you always wonder you know how how that's gonna play out and i feel like it was done extremely well but again south rogan and evan greenberg they've they've done this a a little bit now and with 
with quite a bit of success. So, I mean, they have more stuff coming because they optioned, I think, Invincible. They're going to be doing like an animated version and they're going to be doing a live action version. So they specifically find, you know, this niche of these ultra violent type things that could have ultra violent components and being able to bring it to the masses with success. So I look, you know, definitely look forward to the other stuff they've announced that they have coming down the road. But, you know, this now they're already well into like midway through production of the second season. So like, we probably we getting it like maybe the middle of next year, uh, more than likely from from the looks at it, because they really green lit it and sent it back into production super quick, which is which is great, because then that means we don't have to wait years and years. We might have to wait at most a year. I don't even think we're going to have to wait that long at the rate that it's uh, going. Um Jack Quaid, Aaron Moriarty, Anthony Starr, and Carl Urban all um, did such a great and believable portrayal of their characters. They're not quite exactly how they were in the comics, and you really can't because that is so uh, hyper realized in this today's you know society with so much going on. You kind of had to tone it down a, a bit, but it still keep its same. Um, same integrity or with it so it doesn't feel like they're uh, degrading or uh changing the comic so much though certain aspects of the comic and the story as i saw watching it and watching reviews and stuff like before i was deciding to watch it that certain aspects were major changes from the comic but a lot of people agreed that diehard fans agreed that the at the what they did to adapt it to the big screen worked and they were upset with it as being hardcore fans of uh, of the source material, which is that's good to hear from diehard fans. Again, I wasn't the one. I know I at least read the first trade, and I know I picked up some of the first Dynamite trades, and I vaguely remember reading them. But again, some of the certain aspects when I was watching this, because it does follow a skeleton of the story that's based off the comics as far as events that happen so certain things i was like okay i remember this scene from the comic so like i said i don't think i read past the 20s because i remember i was buying those monthly as it was coming out and i was reading it and i, and I think i kind of tapped out around the teens to mid to late teens going into the 20s is when i kind of jumped off ship with uh with the boys uh I think all the supporting characters also delivered really great performances. I have to say, you know, um, in this day and age where television is getting production levels, you know, you know, as close to and sometimes as equal to what we're seeing in some of these major motion pictures. When you look at stuff at Game of Thrones. Now, it wasn't Game of Thrones level production, but it wasn't like a CW level of production, not to knock them because I've really enjoyed the CW shows. It was kind of like that in between. It wasn't Game of Thrones level. It wasn't CW level. It was somewhere solidly in the middle. Special effects were handled well. I thought, you know, with these shows, you wonder like how much special effects you're going to see. You saw plenty. Um, you know, like I said, the overall production, the sets were very, very nice. The, the scope of the show was, was very, was very fitting. And it made me think about a review I did not too long ago when we were talking about, um, X-Men Dark Phoenix and how that, with the, the budget that movie had, how small in scope it seemed, this show looked like 10 times larger in scope than that show which is in, in that movie which is insane so it's that speaks on the the quality level of the tv production it really shocked me how good everything came together with the special effects the sets the costumes were all just really done well and was really like i said sucked me more into the show with some of the stuff be it there was somewhat disturbing things that we saw was like really like taken back like wow they did not you know, Amazon's not playing. They're trying to become in this whole war that we're having with streaming shows and everybody trying to create their own content and the money that they're willing to put behind it. They're, you know, these these um, companies that's getting into these streaming services want quality original content so they can compete with the Netflix, the Disney Pluses, uh, you know, the what well, HBO Max that's getting ready to come out. All these other things, you know. Um, it, you know, it's, it's becoming an arms race and they're putting the money where their mouth is because this is a good looking show. Um, I felt like the um, length of the season was a perfect 
was uh, felt perfect at eight episodes. Again, we've talked, you know, I've, well, again, I don't know how long you've listened, but I've talked about this, especially when I was doing a lot of reviews uh, covering the CW shows where, you know, it was what, 22 odd episodes and then you had filler and all that. Um, I, I liked the Marvel Netflix shows. 13 at times felt like at, at points that they were, it was some filler episodes in there and they all didn't work and sometimes derail the momentum that the show naturally created for itself. I felt like with this length at eight, it, it felt like it moved along at a brisk pace. It gave you it gave you all the information you needed about the characters. They left enough mystery there. Uh, I didn't feel like it was any fillers. Um, and I, you know, you would hope you see more shows and we've heard already as we're getting close to the launch of Disney Plus at the time I'm recording this, we're coming up and, you know, they know we know that a lot of those shows are way under, you know, way in the way of production or being currently filmed with the Marvel Disney Plus shows that, you know, they're going to be like six to eight episodes. And I think that's good when um, far as if that if the story allows that let the story dictate how many episodes you're going to have. And if I feel like as a consumer, as I'm watching it. If you're telling a full, complete story and I feel like it wasn't a lot cut out, it didn't feel like it was too short, it feels like a good length and it moves along at a good pace and it tells a good story. I feel like that's all that really matters and you have to wait in development of when you're writing that to how that might play out on screen once you're mapping that out and you're not going to know till you know when you're creating the content, when you're in that production phase. And I feel like, you know, doing something like this, I, you know, like I said, I end up binging it in like one night, um... I couldn't sleep, so I started like at a 10 or 11 at night. I watched it all through the night till I finished it, and I felt like very satisfied. I'm like, oh, I'm hyped for the next season. Um, saw disturbing things, saw, you know, some things that made me laugh out loud. I laughed so much, I almost, you know, had tears coming out my eyes, and then shook my head at some stuff. I was like, whoa, they, they went there. And it's some dark, you know, again, this is a dark comic. Don't get anything fooled about it. This show is, again, not for anyone under the age 18, for sure. This is very adult, not safe for work content. Um, but I enjoyed it overall. And like I said, I enjoyed this, you know, the show a lot. And I would watch the second season um, when it does come out, which, again, um, at this point, we know it is in production. It's actually filming. Uh, we just don't have any... Um, that I remember, I didn't see anything about, we know anything when the exact release date's gonna be for the second season. But again, if they're already filming before the end of, you know, and they've been in production since I think late, late August-ish, or maybe right before then, they really greenlit it fast and, you know, episodes were already being, you know, wrote. So they, they went right in production and filming immediately. And on the cliffhanger, they left the first season on, definitely ready to see where things are going to lead going, you know, coming out of this, this, a good first season. I feel like a very solid, uh, first season of the show. Um, for me, I give the show an 8.25 out of 10. That's a required viewing for me. Like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it with the dark aspects. Like I said, you see different things from like, if you're not familiar with the, uh, boys comic, um, you know, definitely some dismemberment, a lot of um, evil Superman laser beams being shot all over the place, uh, people being blown up, people getting, you know, reached inside their bodies and um, organs being pulled out, things of that nature. Um, so, again, it is unlike anything because I haven't watched Preacher at all. I, hadn't, I didn't have any interest in Preacher to follow through and even watch that. So I can't say how it compares to Preacher since uh, these the guys the uh Greenberg and Rogan have, uh, you know, done a, a, another show that was it was considered very violent. I never even read Preacher either. I know a lot of people said, you know, that should be on your bucket list of uh, comic series to read. Um, it just hasn't appealed to me to want to pick it up to read it ever. I considered it. And I think at one point when I had my physical comics collection based on recommendations, I bought like the first trade or whatever of it. And I I don't think I ever read it. I would have to go back in like the four. And this is crazy that this is episode 450. Um, that I may, Maybe I read it at some point. I would have to go back in the archives and see if maybe if I ever did like a trade your pick or a trade review of some sort of it. I don't think I ever got around to it. I remember I, I bought it and I had it. I just don't know. I, can't, I don't think I ever sat down to read it. I think I tried and it was just. Just the aesthetic of it or the vibe of it just didn't appeal to me for me to push through 
to to read it. So I don't know how to compare it. I only compare it against what the little I know of the comic that it's based on in my enjoyment of the show. Again, it's, this is not not for everyone. And like I said, I was surprised that I got through it based on how the comic turned me off. But again, you know, I'm older. I, you know, I can I'm in a different spot. So I can watch it and take entertainment for what it is, entertainment sake and move on. And that's kind of what I did with it. I consumed it. I was like, huh, that was better than what I thought. It wasn't quite what I expected and everything I expected all at the same time. So it was a very complex blend, but I felt like they they did a great job in how they presented the show to the public. Um, You know, I, I, you know, it had some buzz around it. When you can go on and binge something, you know, again, that's what Disney what Disney Plus. They're kind of shying away from that. And they're going to have weekly episode drops. DC Universe did it. And I complained a lot. If you watched a lot of my um, YouTube videos that I did on DC Universe when it first came out over a year ago now, um, I complained about them not, you know, doing the Netflix model. And then we kind of got spoiled by that. But again, you run the risk of something like this with the boys. I watched it just one night wrote up the review, you know, wrote up my, my outline for doing this episode. I haven't revisited again. I haven't heard m- many people talk about it. It had a lot of buzz leading up to the release. Once the episodes dropped, I heard a few people talk about it. And now, you know, it's, it's a few months removed and it's like a fart in the wind kind of till, you know, till I guess we start ramping up for the second season and we start seeing, tr- you know, teasers and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how you run the risk of something that was really a good show if you don't catch it early due to word of mouth and like you're in that that first phase of, of people, you know, rushing to binge it, um, you kind of, you know, you'll lose that momentum and might not even get around to the show. And like I said, it had already been out a month or so when I even watched it. It was just I was like, oh, you know, I never, you know, and I have, you know, Amazon Prime, which we all do. We all probably like if you use Amazon, you have Amazon Prime, so you have Amazon Video. And I was just like, I never go into this. And I was home by myself. My wife was you know, on the road traveling. And I was like, I'm up. I'm bored. I can't sleep. Well, let me watch something. Well, let me go in there and see. And I was like, oh, that's right. That's out. And it was really that much of a non-thought process um, what led me to watch this show. And if it wasn't for that, I might have not have watched the show uh, at this point. So it was a real random set of circumstances. But that's enough of me rambling on about the show. Again, I feel like it's, it's solid. Again, it, I'm, I'm warning everyone it is not for everyone. Please don't watch this with any young kids around. I mean, because d- drastic, traumatic, graphic stuff happens at the very beginning. Like, So it's not it's not like one segment is like, oh, they can watch the first episode with you. No, they can't even watch it five minutes into the first episode. Trust me, you'll know what I'm talking about once you watch it. He's not for little kids. No little kids around. No little kids around. I repeat, no little kids around and no adults that got weak stomachs because they might toss their cookies. I'm just saying I'm warning you about these things because I care. Caring is sharing. That's all I know. But I miss you guys. It seems like it's been forever since I um, sat down in front of the mic. You know, you know, a lot of you might know if you're on the Facebook group, uh, which you can join at comment. Excuse me. Eh, wrong at Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash the Savant Society. All one word. Um, you can request to join. As soon as I see your request, I have to manually accept you into the group. And then once you get in, we'll, um, you know, we'll welcome you into the group. You can do a little drop on like introducing yourself, what comics you're into and things of that nature, just introducing yourself to the group. And then like we just shoot, shoot the breeze about comics and what we're going through personally and all that. Again, like I really have missed you guys. It seemed like it's been a long time though. You've probably heard me a week ago, uh, you know, because of coming out post-surgery and I don't know how many of you guys are familiar. I had, um, I had a procedure, had weight loss surgery. Um, I've been post-surgery now for, I don't know, like a month now, I think. I think it's that. Yeah, it's actually a month today as I'm recording. Um, it's been roughly a month since I've had surgery. Uh, yeah, it's been a big change. I, I, you know, you, doctors will tell you one thing, your body tells you a total another. So it's been, uh, it's been a real interesting journey. Certain things I thought I would be able to do sooner, I haven't. Um, again, I'm trying to take it as easy as possible, getting back to what my new normal is. Um, and you have good days, you have bad days. 
um, but I love creating content and I had done a lot in advance in preparation of this time. Um, again, like certain days where I'm, you know, like I'm hyped and I'm ready to get in front of the mic, certain other things happen or, or, you know, like I said, with the adjustment of the whole new lifestyle that, um, it's been somewhat challenging. So it's good to be able to get back in front of the microphone. Um, for you guys that also follow the YouTube content, I'm getting there. I just, my energy level hasn't been where I like it to be or want it to be for me to be in front of the camera to do that at this point. I'm trying to get there. Uh, at this point, it's like, like way easier to get in front of a microphone with nobody watching instead of me, you know, talking to a camera, talking to you guys face to face and my energy level. I probably going to look considerably different because like at this point, uh, I've probably from last time if someone seen me on camera, I've probably lost somewhere upwards of about 100 pounds at this point. I'm pretty close to 100 pounds. So I'm probably going to look quite a bit different when you do see me on camera at that point. Um, but it's coming soon. Um, I'm working on getting getting my uh, my energy level there where, where you know, it's not like like, dad, you look like you sound like a dead wet fish. I hope I don't sound too much like a dead wet fish right now, to be honest with you. Uh, but I definitely wanted to get something out there to you guys. Um, and I definitely have been wanting to talk about the show to see what you guys think. So let me know um, in the comment section or you can always go to the website and email me your thoughts. If you go to the comicbooksavant.com website and go to contact us, you can always email me from there. Or you can email me directly just at comicbooksavant at gmail.com if you have you know feedback or have opinions on on the boys and you want to talk about that let me know i really like to hear from you guys and see what you guys think about it but that's all i have for you guys for this episode as always i'm your host james harris this is the comic book savant until next time you guys stay safe and i will talk to you soon take care